It's chilly this morning, everyone. Ooh-wee, the wind, I, and it's a little windy. But uh, it's been a few days since I, I was busy this week. I had, it was my birthday on Monday, so I, uh, my friend Don took me to lunch, and yesterday, Jeannie took me to lunch, so, uh, for my birthday, so it's been a birthday week. All right, this is what's happening in the garden. Uh, the lettuce is probably pretty happy to have some cool weather. I took out my rhubarb that I'm taking with, and I put this in here from the container it was in, so I'll have another container I can put something in. I don't have much else that I'm gonna take with me. It's all in the greenhouse, and I'll show you that in a bit. The Brussels sprouts are coming on pretty good. It'll be a couple months. We'll have br fresh Brussels sprouts out of the garden. Um, I've been watering real good in the garden, trying to, and look how pretty that bloom is. That's the nasturtium. And you can eat these blooms and the leaves as well. They're very nutritious. I put them in, the sal in my salads. Uh, when I'm dressing up tacos, I put the blooms on there. It's very good for you. Antifungal, anti-inflammatory. It's got phosphorus, uh, iron, zinc, calcium. I mean, it's just packed full of goodness. And also, if you grow this in your garden, within your garden, it'll help keep the bad pests away. I don't think it's kept my grubs away, though. Oh, boy, I have a lot of grubs. When I dug up that rhubarb, I bet I had to step on five of them. I still have some herbs to pick and let dry. It's just kind of dying down. The butterflies are pretty much gone. Um, the gonfrina is still going. I mean, it's starting to look a little shabby, but not bad. I could cut this all and just hang it upside down, let it dry. My biggest thing is I need to keep packing. I still had things up in my cupboards that I needed to pack away because I don't use them that often. So that's what I'll be doing today. I need to clean my cupboards. These have got berries on them and it, the catbirds like them. And I love the catbirds, they're so pretty. If you've ever seen one, they're just very pretty birds. They're uh, kind of black and gray and I don't know. They're, they're nice birds. Uh, the, the lantana and the verbena is doing very well over there still. I'm just, I'm just gonna kind of let nature take its course and I still water it because I still want to see the pretty blooms as long as I can. And plus, it'll be the last time I grow anything in this garden. A little bit of heartbreak here. Let's see, I still have some, some things that are doing okay. They are looking like fall. It's looking like fall. Look at my pineapple and it smells like pineapple. It smells so pretty. They're going to be small this year, but that's okay. They'll grow bigger. Once they get established, they'll be big. And this one, my chrysanthemum that I've had for a long time, I cut it way back and then it just comes right back up every year. And I need to cut off some cactus. I might take some cactus with us. And my neighbor wants some more cactus, so I need to get a few for her. This is kind of looking shabby through here, but you know, it's fall time and we're getting some cool weather. I think it's like 54 today. It feels like 51. I see them. I need to pull weeds. I don't know if I will. I might. I'll pull some weeds, but I'm going to need to get this out of here. Um, she has been just beautiful this fall absolutely beautiful so this week i'll probably dig up the tubers from it but boy look at the buds it's making 
We can have some nice weather all the way through November, even December. We can have some nice weather, but we also can be frozen as well. So I want to make sure I get it before the ground freezes. And my hydrangea, I think next year she will look a lot better than what she does. She'll grow taller. She needs to be cut back probably in the spring, but I may cut her back for before I leave. I need to do something with this container. I'm just kind of waiting until things die back. I don't need this container yet, but I will want to take it with me. The hostas that I put in earlier, I've been keeping them wet so they can get their roots in there. And I think they're going to do just fine. Hopefully they're kind of hard to kill. That, that was from a very, very established plant. But uh, notice that the one that was over here, it's completely gone. <laughs> but it'll come back next year. And the same for this one over here. They'll both come back next year. My Dusty Miller is always looking pretty. She's supposed to be an annual. But it comes back every year. We just must have the right weather for it. This is getting pretty. I just love when this gets dried out and it's just pretty, really pretty. It looks like little sparkles. Got my coleus out here. I cut I cut all the tall things back. They were eaten off of pretty good. And they may grow back a little bit here and there for the bees. And this is just gorgeous. I just absolutely love this impatience. A New Guinea impatient. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. And it's going with me. Probably the only one that will. The Mandevilla, she just keeps blooming. I cut off some of their vines that were just twisted, twisted, twisted. They will grow back very easily. I'm going to try to keep them for next year. I'll have a trellis out at the farm. It was just so pretty. I love the, the white. It's so pretty. My Estelle B will go with the LaGuardia. I hope it does okay next year. I think it'll do a lot better next year once it's established. I put it in the spring and I think I did a bad thing when I cut off the blooms off of it, the dead blooms, because they turn into little fuzzy balls. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have cut them, probably. I hope it just reflushes next year and will be good. I don't know if I'm supposed to cut them back. I don't think so. I'll have to look. There's my, my hyacinth bean and my chocolate mint. I hope these grow back. I think they will. I think they'll sprout up next spring because here's a stem of them right here and it looks like it's doing pretty good. The kitties came in here and went potty and that's a big no-no and they know it. Oh, I was upset because it just rots the roots on your plants when they do that. Their, their pee is not good for plants, that's for sure. I have still haven't decided if I'm taking my herker or not. I think it's going to depend on how much of, gardener, of a gardener we're going to get in here. I hope that we get a gardener in here that loves it. I think everyone loves flowers, so we'll just have to see if they want it or not. If they want it, I'll leave it. If not, then I'll dig it up and take it with me. And my beautiful begonia, she's going to go with me. We've been through a lot together, haven't we, Pegasus? This is still pretty. I put it in here. It's not going to last long, but maybe I should try to break it put it in there deeper so it stays that wind just takes everything but that's just a quick overall I have my niece she's going to take my dried flowers and I told her she does really pretty wreaths she makes wreaths and I thought maybe she could tuck some in on a wreath or something or do something with them I just don't have the time unfortunately this year next year I will uh I will do more with some dried flowers. Okay, let's go look at the greenhouse. Show you what all I have in here. Okay, there's my rhubarb. And there's my Persian shield. There's my cherry bush. There's our tulip tree that we've grow been growing. There's my celosia. 
coleus there's doing good in here that I took pieces of and I don't know how my lambs ear will do but we'll just see I'm just gonna leave it no matter how gnarly it looks I'm just gonna leave it it's a diantha sweet william and I did try to take some pieces of the Persian shield for my daughter-in-law and look this one is popping up so I think it's got a good start it's making new leaves so look at that it's doing good I may just give this one is dead I'm just gonna leave it the way it is and just let it grow uh, this is an this is a double impatien and this is the pin cushion these are my lilies I got all the with a snail oh I'm sorry buddy you need to find a new home and put him up over there by the shed he'll find a good home um, these are all my lilies I got my bulbs all tucked in there and I hope they'll be okay this is my uh, hellebores and look they're making it sprout it up I don't know if that's gonna be a bloom but there's three of them on this little one the little one that I didn't think was doing very well but look it's new growth already started about two days after I took her out and put her in a pot this one I think will be okay it's just just staying the way she is she's not making anything new I don't think but hopefully she'll be all right too and I still have pieces of chocolate mint and uh, ivy for anyone who would want them and I have my helotrop and I have some columbine that this is one of those uh hostas that I put out front I took another piece of it to take it to the farm with me because it is a beautiful hosta and there's my walking onion that I dug out yesterday and I have another lily and I have this is the blanket flower this is the pestamon okay and then I got another little uh, impatient and that's it I think that's it that's all I have that's what I'm taking and then there's a few buckets out or a few containers out here that I'm going to take with two. I'll probably bring the begonia in here in a week or so and the hyacinth bean in here, the uh, astilbe in here. Probably take that nice big blue ceramic container of kitty nip with me as well. That's it for today for now. I've just been busy packing and you've seen me pack, you've seen me dig up things and it's uh, I left a lot of bulbs in the garden for them. Uh, they're very pretty lilies. They're like Easter lilies and then I have a, a yellow lily, apricot fudge. I left a piece of it in there for them. And I have a purple lily as well. Oh, and I got another lily this year. I can't remember the name of it. It was orange and black. It was so pretty. I hope I got a piece of it. I just don't remember exactly where everything is. Because those little wooden tags that I used, they have composted already. So, I don't know. That's the only bad thing about them. They compost too bad too quick they were really cute I liked them a lot but I need my tags to stay I need the names on them not to wash away and all that good stuff so I'm gonna be looking some for some a little bit different tags to tag things with so I know where's what and what's where once my brother will come and till it for me you know everything will be mixed up probably especially the lilies I have seed I can get more bulbs for for lilies I can get more tubers for dahlias it'll be a, it'll be fun it'll be a lot of fun um, this year I started over with a raised bed I had it all tilled so it was nice and easy to plant and when you till it your roots do a lot better because we have clay dirt underneath that. The clay dirt gets hard like cement if it doesn't get watered enough. And that's what we had a lot of this year. So tilling it saved saved me a lot of headaches. But um, when you till a garden, 
or a field. It helps your roots do better. And especially in a drought, because them roots need to travel to find water sometimes. And uh, it's a lot better. It makes a plant grow better. You're not really losing dirt. It just settles somewhere else. You still got dirt. I mean, it's dirt is dirt. And um, you can put more dirt in there. You can do whatever. But I've never lost hardly any dirt tilling. None at all. And it's good for the ground to till it. That's about it. I've got packing to do, so I'm going to get busy doing that. I need to call this guy with the containers. They never called back, so I'm going to try to get a hold of him today because we need our container. And uh, that way we can do a uh, get a quote on how much it's going to cost us to move it because I got a company that actually does that. It says fill them up and we'll move them for you. And they have a lift. So it doesn't matter what kind of surface it's on, whether it's cement, whether it's grass, whether it's just plain dirt, they can pick it up and put it on the truck. So that's pretty cool. We're getting there, we're getting there. My husband just has one bedroom that he needs to uh he needs to caulk and then he needs to mud the trim where he put the nails in I'll mud that and repaint it so they can't see the nails so it'll look nice <clears throat> so with that all being said i gotta get busy i my kitties go in for their shots next tuesday i have some glassware that i need to wrap up and get packed this this i'm gonna keep out my grandson wants me to make him an apple pie for Thanksgiving this year, so I left a couple pie plates out, and um, I'll be busy doing that, too, coming up here pretty soon. I'll be making, um, I'll be making cookies for Halloween kids. I always make monster cookies for them in our little town. I don't really hand out candy anymore because they get a lot of that, so I thought, monster cookies would be really good and it does it goes over very well come thanksgiving i'll be starting to make i really make some of my normal turkey dressing uh, sweet potatoes and uh, and i use butter and brown sugar and caramelize them caramelize sweet potatoes and then mashed potatoes gravy all that stuff for thanksgiving so I probably ought to start looking for a turkey to put in my freezer so I can have it ready. Come Christmas, Christmas time, I'm making candy. I make divinity, uh, peanut butter fudge, chocolate fudge, chocolate peanut clusters. I make a few cookies. Um, I don't know how many I'll make this year. I know my other grandson, I always send him oatmeal raisin cookies because he loves them. That's about it. Just, you know, some things just to give to friends and neighbors and people who need a, need a candy box. <laughs> Whatever. All right, you guys. You all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. My, my dahlias, they are so beautiful. I'm getting ready to dig up the tuber. This is the uh, I think I got them on the Eden Brothers. knocking down my my gate. <laughs>
I hope it didn't bend it too much, but... Uh-oh, I'm sorry, Lucy. I didn't mean to bump your head. We'll see how... They get there so heavy. And oh, aren't they just gorgeous? Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to take the leaves off of them. I'm going to put them in some water and leave them outside because I think they'll do last a little longer. Last, they may last a little longer in the cooler air. So, I mean, when I was a florist, we always kept our flowers in the cooler. Pull these leaves off. You don't want them. You don't want to put flowers in with leaves. Sometimes I will leave some leaves just because it gives us gives it a little bit of fuller look, but they're way up top. They're not going to touch the water. As long as they're not touching the water, it shouldn't hurt much. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm so happy with these. They're dinner plates. Mm. Okay. I'm going to go top to the bottom off. Put them in some cool water. And see how long I can keep them. Mm -hmm. So windy. It's been windy the last two or three days. Because that cool air is coming in. So, I love showing these off. They're so pretty. You have to get some. You have to get them. They're just gorgeous. And they grow, they grow awesome. I don't have a big enough vase, so I'm going to use a bucket and put some water in it. do a little shorter. I may have to take some more leaves off. Girls like to stay in my greenhouse when it's windy. Lucy, what you doing, baby? Yep, you can get a drink out of there. Some of them are hollow. That means that they're they're about done for the season. So, there we go. That's all right. I'm not gonna worry about the leaves. Talk to you later.